What's up everyone? My name is Jonathan and welcome to the Mid School Sessions. This is episode 2 of my 1991 Horror Sport Restoration Project. seen episode one please make sure you check it out in that video I talk about the history of the Harvest Board and also explain why I think these bikes are so influential in early mid-school BMX history today we're going to be taking a closer look at the bike behind me I'm going to be giving you a bit of insight into how I approach these restoration projects and we're also going to start the tear down and get it ready for rebuild for me the goal with this build like all of my projects is era correctness not necessarily catalog correctness, but something that is true to form and what people like me and you would have ridden back in the early 90s. It's all about preserving the history of BMX for me, and for that reason alone, era correctness is super important. So with that in mind, let's take a look at what I've bought, let's check out the condition of the bike, and let's get started with the restoration. So this bike is largely in survival condition. It has original paint and decals, and for me when I was looking for one of these, that was a really important piece of it. My favourite part of this frame is the fact that it still has the original British Standard sticker on the down tube. That means that this bike was imported and sold brand new in the UK. A number of my bikes have these types of features, things like original shop stickers on the seat tubes, and for me, those details really make a difference in terms of the authenticity of the bike. There's a good amount of wear and tear, but I like the story that that tells, and for a 32-year-old freestyle bike, it's in decent shape. So many of these bikes have been refinished over the years, and a lot of them are actually not even 91s. They are later models that have been refinished and restickered to look like 91s. This bike also has the original Peregrine HP48 wheels. They're a little bit dusty and dirty, but from what I can see now, they look in pretty good condition. It also has the original horror seat, seat post and fusion double seat post clamp, as well as the original fusion pedals, cranks and fusion sprocket. So a lot of parts there that kind of show this bike is largely untouched and has survived in its original form. There are however a few other parts of the bike that aren't era correct. Things like the bars, the grips and the gyro are all from a later era and will need to be looked at as part of the restoration. The stem is actually of a horror air master and while i do prefer it this one's been polished within an inch of its life i really do not like polishing survivor parts and unfortunately this one has had that treatment and then finally the odyssey bare feet tires i know a lot of people love these things but to me they're just a novelty tire i can't take them seriously so they'll be getting swapped out as well all things considered this bike is a great base to start from it has a lot of originality as well as some nice age-related patina the parts that do need replacing give us some room to bring in some era correct upgrades. Let's get it in the stand and start the tear down.
With the strip down complete, we now move on to the restoration. And taking the bike apart, there were no issues. Of course, there are some components there that will need cleaning up and restoration, but there was no major damage. This is one of the cleanest sets of HP 48s I've ever come across. They do not have a single wobble, dent or flat spot. And after 32 years as freestyle wheels, that's really impressive. One of the things I noticed when I was looking for one of these bikes to restore is how many of them are incorrectly listed online. It doesn't matter if you're looking on eBay, Facebook Marketplace, or even the BMX Museum. You often see Bash God Sports listed under the incorrect model year. I think this is because so many people use the decals or even the paint color to try and identify the year of the bike. And with so many of these bikes having been refinished over the years, a bike only needs to change hands once or twice and the new owner can't be sure what year it is. To help with this, I've pulled together some blueprints. So if you have a Bash God Sport or are looking to buy a Bash God Sport and aren't confident in identifying the model year, hopefully this helps. It's by no means a comprehensive list of all the differences in the bikes, but what it will do is give you some key indicators that can help you age a Bash God Sport without relying on the decals or paint color. 1990 was the first year of the Bash God Sport, and there are three things to look out for in identifying one of these models. Firstly, it was the only year to have a coaster brake tab, and this can be found on the lower left chainstay. Secondly, the seat tube gusset was a flat plate similar to those found on the 89 and 90 Hara Masters. Finally, this model had a unique fork, but the easiest way to identify it is by looking for a peg boss halfway up the fork leg. 1991 was the first year where the Bash God Sport was officially released. There is one unique feature to this model year that can help you identify it. That is the peg boss on the frame. You can find this where the chainstay meets the dropout and no other year of Bash God Sport has this feature. Other updates included the new wing seat tube gusset. This was made from an overlaced piece of tubing and the profile resembled the shape of an aircraft wing. This feature carried through to future years. There was another update and this was a unique fork with tapered legs and a peg boss low down near the dropout. The 92 model remained largely unchanged, however Halro made the decision to remove the peg boss from both the frame and the fork. In 93 and 94 the frame remained unchanged, however you can identify these bikes by looking at the fork which is paired with the frame. In 93 they reinstated the peg boss on the fork low down near the dropout. The 1994 fork had a tiny dropout which also included a cutout just below the fork leg. This dropout was incredibly weak. Mounting a peg would almost certainly result in bending or breaking. Haro took note of this weakness in the fork and for 1995 they launched a brand new mega fork. This fork was oversized with straight legs, bigger dropouts and a cutout for the pegs. The frame also received a small update. This model has a tab welded to the drive side of the bottom bracket designed to accommodate a chain guard. It's worth noting that people often remove these tabs when refinishing these frames. As I mentioned, those blueprints don't contain every difference between the model years, but what it will hopefully do is give you enough information so that if you are shopping for a Bash Guard Sport, you get exactly what you're looking for. If having a hard copy would be helpful, feel free to drop a comment below and I'll gladly share a download link with you to a high res PDF. In the next episode, we'll begin the actual restoration. I'll be going through the components on the bike and showing you some of the techniques I use to restore them back to original finish. I'll also be introducing you to some of the ERA-correct upgrades that I plan to make to this bike. If you've enjoyed watching so far, please make sure you like and subscribe. Doing so really helps with the algorithm and ensures that other like-minded people who are also passionate about mid-school BMX get to see this content. Thank you for watching and see you in episode three.